Most guidelines and regulations regarding wake boats are based on studies involving one boat operating at a time. These studies vary substantially in quality and credibility, ranging from a flawed industry-funded study based on a hypothetical boat to studies conducted by research universities that compare the wakes from different kinds of boats. A couple of states have already adopted laws that incorporate the woefully inadequate guidelines proffered by the wake surfing industry, which recommend that wake boats stay at least 200 feet away from shorelines and docks. A few other states have adopted or are considering adopting more protective restrictions that reflect the higher quality research into wake boats. An important characteristic of waves is that they transmit energy, not water, across the surface of a water body. The energy in a boat wake remains in the water until it is either transferred to another object, such as a lake bottom or shoreline, or until it internally dissipates by breaking down into smaller and smaller turbulent eddies. It is the transfer of energy that erodes shorelines, scours lake and river bottoms, and injures the tiny organisms that form the base of the food chains in aquatic ecosystems. This is why wave energy, not wave height, is the most relevant property to consider when evaluating how best to limit the damage that wake sports inflict on shorelines, structures, other watercraft, and ecosystems. Wake boat studies have provided much useful information, such as the fact that wake boats generate waves that contain 2 to 10 times the energy found in the wakes of traditional ski and fishing boats, and that wake surfing in shallow water inputs more energy into the water than wake surfing in deep water does. Waves generated by a single wake boat tend to follow a consistent pattern, in which the wake begins as a massive wave behind the boat, which quickly forms into a wave set of two or three tall waves. Depending on factors such as the distance from the boat, the depth of the water, and the nature of the bottom sediments, this set of waves will transition to more numerous but shorter waves. Nonetheless, in deeper water, the wave set from a wake boat can persist in substantially its initial form for considerable distances. In such cases, there may not be much difference between a wake that has travelled 200 feet and one that has travelled 500 feet. When multiple wake boats are on the water, they put more energy into the water than do single boats, and the wave behaviour becomes more complex. Wakes that come from different directions typically produce a choppy state that spreads over a large area. Reflected wakes tend to add to the choppiness. Waves originating from boats on parallel courses can form augmented waves that carry more energy than waves from single boats. In some cases, when a waterway is subjected to sustained wake boat activity, boat wakes can produce a swell that persists even when boats have left the immediate vicinity. Such swells can result in sustained pounding of shorelines and structures. Flat water ecosystems can only absorb so much energy before they incur adverse effects. Similarly, excessive wakes impair the recreational value of water bodies. Although efforts to protect water bodies from wake boats need to consider the research involving single boats, consideration must also be given to the fact that the cumulative wave energy from multiple boats exerts greater effects that adversely affect larger areas. Our lakes and rivers are valuable. We should take better care of them.